Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are building an AI system that creates Facebook ads at scale using Google's new image generation model, Nano Banana, and it turns any product into a scroll-stopping creative. With this automation, you just paste your product catalog into a simple spreadsheet and get professional-grade creatives. Each ad costs pennies to generate, and you own 100% of the assets forever. Today, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build it, but before we get into the breakdown, let me show you how it works. So as an example here, I'm gonna take this dog dental powder product. It's a perfect example because, you know, pet products are huge on Facebook right now, and dental health is really a pain point for dog owners. And I know this from my personal experience. But anyway, in Airtable, all I need to do is bring in the product name and the product URL. Then I just hit run and create. The whole automation consists of four steps, basically four workflows in any 10 in the backend, okay? Step one is to generate a problem solution hypothesis. So we use Perplexity API, which visits the product page and searches for all the information about the product. Based on that, it comes up with the target audience, the pain point and the solution. If I check this generate ad copy box, it will automatically trigger the next workflow. So step number two is to generate ad copy for the specific problem solution fit. The AI is crafting 10 completely different ad variations each targeting different um, psychological triggers like pain, aspiration, social proof, urgency, etc. Each ad includes a headline, primary text, and call to action. Again, if I check the box to generate image prompt, it triggers the next workflow. So step number three is to generate an image prompt. In this workflow, the AI is analyzing the ad copy and creating a detailed visual prompt that will produce an image perfectly matched to the copy. Okay, so this isn't a generic prompt. It's specifically crafted to complement the message of this individual ad. In the image prompts tab in Airtable, you'll see several prompts generated and populated here. If I select one of them to generate an image, it will trigger the last workflow. So step number four is the generate image workflow. This creates the actual images using Google's latest image generation model, Nano Banana. So this way you can quickly generate high quality images for Facebook ads in just minutes and the entire system only needs two inputs from you, right? Pretty cool considering that normally this would require a copywriter, a graphic designer, market research and multiple revisions. All right, now let's walk through the system. For this tutorial, we use Airtable and NA10. In Airtable, we have four tables. Think of them as stations on an assembly line, okay? Table number one is products. This is our command center. Each row is a product. Fields include product name and product URL, and the workflow from NITN fills in target audience, pain points, and solutions, so each product becomes like a complete campaign seed. Table number two is ad copy, so every generated Facebook ad lives here. Headline, primary text, CDA, and each ad links back to its product, so you can trace messaging to, to the source. Table number three is image prompt, so this one stores the AI-crafted prompts that describe how an image should look like, to match each ad. These prompts are tailored to the ad copy and the system will use them for generating images using Nano Banana. And table number four, images, our final output table. So all the generated visuals, URLs, thumbnails, all of them live here with links back to the prompt, to the ad and the product so that we have full traceability. Now let's move to the interface. This is where the end user basically works with this system in Airtable. First, the user enters a product's name and product's URL. They click run to stage the record, and when they click create, it triggers the Airtable automation. If I open the automation and go to the trigger condition, it says when record matches conditions, then table products and conditions run checkbox is ticked, right? So next, we've got a run script action. This script packages two pieces of data and sends them to NA10. Airtable record ID or the whole record payload and NA10 webhook URL, in this case, test webhook endpoint. So this script sends a JSON payload to the webhook, which triggers the NA10 workflow. Now in NA10, this is our starting point. When you click that run button in Airtable, it fires off a webhook, which triggers this workflow. In the webhook node, you can see we have both a test URL and a production URL. This is like crucial for development, always test with the test URL first, 
and then switch to production when you're ready to go live. Copy the test URL because you'll need it in your Airtable automation. The webhook method is set to get because we are getting data from Airtable to NA10. For the path, you can choose anything descriptive. In my case, I've just used Facebook ad. And for now, the authentication is set to none and the response setting is immediate. So the webhook fires instantly without waiting for an, uh, any extra steps. Next, we have the Airtable get record node. This is where we pull back the product information that the user just submitted through the interface. So let me break down each setting here. Resource is record. I've selected record because what we need here is a single specific entry from Airtable, not a list, not a base, just one record. Operation obviously gets since we are only retrieving existing data. We are not creating a new record or updating one yet. The goal here is simply to fetch the product details that already exist in the table. A base from my list of Airtable bases, I selected the one called Facebook Ad Manager, and that's where all my products and ad data is stored. Table from list, then products table. Remember, this is the table where the initial product name, products URL, and all the AI enriched details like target audience, pain points, and solutions are stored. And finally, for the record ID, I'm pulling it dynamically from the webhook. So this value, JSON query record ID, just drag and drop it from the webhook node. And it basically ties this workflow step directly to the product that triggered the automation in the first place. Now let's look at the research product node. This is where we use perplexity to analyze the product page in real time. And in order to make it work, you need to paste the API key from perplexity. Operation here is message a model. I'm sending a specific prompt to the model, Sonar. So this model is designed for research and browsing. It can pull accurate insights directly from the product URL messages. Here's the actual prompt, right? I'll tell the AI to act as a senior conversion copy analyst, visit the product URL dynamically. And then I have my expression, JSON product URL. Again, just drag and drop the value from the previous node, and it will be dynamically populated here. Then ignore irrelevant sections like navigation or legal fine print and focus on the core products offer. Role user, so it keeps the instruction treated as a user request and simplify output, keep it off. I, I want the raw detailed output because the next node will parse it into target audience, pain point, and solutions. Here's where we handle the AI's response. So the raw output from perplexity comes as one big text block, but we need three separate fields for Airtable, right? So this JavaScript just takes the AI response and extracts the target audience, the pain point, and the solution into separate variables. And the last note here updates the Airtable record. So the resource is set to record, the operation is set to update, and for the base, I've selected Facebook Ad Manager and Table Products. I've mapped each column manually, and the column we match on is ID. So this ensures the correct product gets updated. For the values, we are updating our four fields, ID, target audience, pain point, and solution. And all these fields take dynamic values coming from the previous node. This way, like every time the workflow runs, it updates the right record in Airtable with our fresh research findings. All right, now let's move on to our second workflow, the ad copy generation system. At this stage, all our research data is already updated in Airtable. You can see here in brand guidelines, we've got the target audience, pain points, and solutions all filled in. Now to generate ad copy, all I need to do is click on the generate ad copy button. And as soon as I click that, Airtable kicks off a second automation, which triggers the second workflow in NA10. So again, we start with the webhook trigger node, pretty much the same configuration as before, but right after the webhook, I've added an extra step to update the add copy status field in Airtable to running. This is just for a better user experience, because, you know, it gives the user instant feedback. They know their request is being processed and it prevents them from, you know, accidentally clicking the button multiple times. Next, we pull back the full product record from Airtable, the target audience, pain points and solutions, because we need, you know, to feed that context to the AI in the next step, which is the AI writer. And it is basically the brain of this workflow. So for this, I'm using Claude Sonnet 4. In my opinion, it's the best for creative writing tasks like ad copy. So in the system prompt, I clearly define the AI as a season direct response copywriter who specializes in Facebook ads. Remember, it always performs better if you give it a clear role. Then I set specific requirements. So exactly 10 variations. So it's always consistent. 
character limits to comply with Facebook ad policies must include headline, primary text, and CTA, call to action, follow brand voice guidelines, and output everything in clean JSON structure. If you're gonna adapt this workflow to your business or you know to sell to others, the prompt here is where you need to do your best, okay? This level of detail makes the workflow professional and reliable, and we are not just hoping that AI gives us good copy. We are telling it exactly how to deliver. Then I added a structured output parser. Here I define a JSON schema that enforces the format. So if the AI response is malformed or missing fields, the parser automatically asks it to fix the output. This kind of guarantees that what comes out of this node is clean and predictable data every single time. Now we take those 10 add variations and process them with a code node. The LLM gives us like one big JSON object, but Airtable needs individual records, right? So this script loops through each variation, assembles a complete full add field, like headline plus text plus CTA, and separates them out. Next, we push everything back to Airtable. So this create record node is set to handle multiple records at once. Each add variation becomes its own row in the add copy table. And again, using expressions, I just automatically link every ad copy record back to the original products. That way, Airtable always knows which ads belong to which product. And finally, I update the original product's record one last time, changing the ad copy status from running to completed. That closes the loop and the user knows their ads are ready and they can move on to the next step. All right, now that we've got our ad copies ready in Airtable, we are ready for the next step. And to move forward, I just need to click on the generate image prompt button. And the moment I do that, Airtable runs another automation again and fires the next webhook. Now you know the drill, right? This one works almost exactly like the previous flows. It starts with the webhook node. That's how the ad copy data enters our workflow. Here we are receiving fields like the full ad copy, headline, primary text, and CTA. All the ingredients, you know, we'll need for image generation. Again, we update the record status in Airtable to running just for the UX to show the user that the system is already working. Next, we pull the full ad copy record using a get operation. And then there is an LLM call. Instead of a copywriter like in flow number two, I've set up the system prompt to define the AI as an AI art director who specializes in visual storytelling. So this tells the AI, your job is to take the ad copy and turn it into creative, scroll-stopping visual ideas. I've also included strict requirements in the prompt, one-to-one -one aspect ratio, perfect for Facebook ads, modern clean compositions, a clear focal point that grabs attention, overlay text limited to six words, multiple creative angles, um, product shots, lifestyle imagery, emotional moments, bold typography, you know, brand colors for consistency. And then we have the structured output parser. So just like before, we don't let the AI return free form text, we enforce a JSON schema, meaning that AI must give us structured results like prompt text, creative angle, and overlay text. If the AI messes up the format, this parser asks it to fix it, to fix the output before moving forward. That's how we make sure that the workflow is reliable. Now the AI has given us 10 different image prompts, but Airtable again needs them saved individually. So this code node loops through each variation, packages them up and prepares them to be inserted into the database. It also links each image prompt back to the right ad copy record. So everything stays relational and organized. Here I run a create operation on the image prompt table. So each of those 10 variations becomes a new row connected to the ad copy it came from. And finally, I go back to the original ad copy record and update the status to complete it. So this closes the loop and tells the user, your image prompts are ready to use. And now let's move on to our final workflow, the image generation pipeline. This is where our text-based prompts finally turn into real visuals. First, we go back to Airtable. In the image prompts table, all the values are already updated, the prompt text, the product it belongs to, and the linked ad copy. From here, all I have to do is click the generate image button. That button, of course, triggers another Airtable automation. It's the same pattern as before, and if the condition is met, 
it calls our flow number four webhook in NA10. And in NA10, we have the same webhook node as always, then update status node. So it updates the record status to generating images, then get a record. So we pull back the full product record from Airtable and then the custom HTTP node. This is where we send the HTTP request to Google's Nano Banana. The configuration is method post because we are sending data, you know, our prompt and asking for an image back. The URL here is taken from Google's API documentation. It will be here in this node when you import the template to your NA10 workspace. What you need to enter here is your Google API key that you can create in Google AI Studio. So just do that and it will work. And the body is an expression, our image prompt coming directly from Airtable. So this is basically how we actually generate the image from the Nano Banana model. All right. Right after the HTTP request, we add an edit fields node. Gemini's response is messy. So here we just pull out two things. Base, the raw image in base64. And MIME is just like file type like image or PNG. In the next node, we convert the base64 encoded data into a real image file. So something we can actually upload and work with. If you click view, you can check how the image looks like. And then there is another HTTP request node. And this time, this is important for production okay we don't want to store large images files inside Airtable so instead I use image kit which is a CDN like an online server for fast image delivery so this HTTP request is already configured for the value field you need to first take your private key from image kit then convert that key into base64 encoding and you can just google like encode base64 online you can just paste your key and get the result and then in the value write it as basic space and then paste your like base64 encoded key i hope this is clear um, then form data is the binary file we just created and once uploaded image kit gives us back a public url for the image this keeps our database clean and basically makes the images instantly shareable using the URLs. Finally, I push everything back into Airtable, the image kit URL, the related products, the related ad copy, and the related image prompt. And that's it. You can download this template absolutely free. I'll attach it in the video description. If you found this tutorial helpful, please smash that like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments which kind of tutorials you'd like to see in my next videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.